All right, guys, I'm continuing my coverage of the Yamaha RXA 6A Avantage AV receiver. You see it in the background. I'm in the lab doing my bench test. I want to talk to you about the impedance selector switch. I've been telling you guys for years to always set the switch to high or leave it on its default setting. I want to talk to you about what that switch does to this receiver and what the best setting is for your needs. Hey folks, I'm Gene Dolisalo with Audioholics, and we are going to talk impedance switches again. You know, I hate these things so much. And no matter how many videos I do, there's always someone in the comments down below saying, I switched it to the forum setting because I got forum speakers and it sounds so much more dynamic. It's so much more powerful. No, it's not. And I'm going to show you the facts because I know if I tell you to set it to the high setting, it's not going to be enough. You know, if you ever watched the movie Tommy Boy, you could get a good look at a T-bone if you stick your head up a cow's ass, but I just take a butcher's word on it. Well, here I am. I'm the butcher. I'm with my audio precision doing very precise measurements to show you guys. I'm going to give you data that you can't get on any other YouTube channel because I care. I care about truth and power. As Arnold says, you got to have power, absolute power. So first thing I want to show you is this receiver has actually got some good power when it's only driving two channels. So the Yamaha RX-A 6A is rated for 150 watts a channel. You can see here I did a power sweep with two channels driven into eight ohm loads. I got 168 watts a channel with both channels driven at 0.1% THD, which is really low distortion. And then it went up to about 186 watts at 1%. Now I check at 0.1 and 1% because 1% represents the onset of clipping that you can see on an oscilloscope and arguably is audible, whereas 0.1% is well below the clipping threshold. It's still clean power. So I give you both power. So in two channels driven, you get 168 watts at 0.1% and 186 watts at 1%. That's very respectful because it's basically giving you way more power than 150 watt rating. So kudos to Yamaha on that. So what happens when you set the impedance switch to the low setting? So before I go to that, I wanna show you where this is. I don't like the fact that Yamaha put the switch so easily found on the on-screen display. In the past, it used to be in an advanced service menu that the general public couldn't get to. Now they're sticking it in the speaker setup where anybody could just go in there and set that incorrectly. And by the way, the incorrect setting for that is the low setting, just for people that don't want to watch this whole video. I'll save you time right there. So you go into the speaker configuration option, you click speaker impedance, and it's defaulted at eight ohms minimum. And this is the setting you want to keep it at, in my opinion, based on my test data. You guys do what you want. You give me the comments down below what you're doing, but I want to show you what's going on. So with that out of the way, when we set the impedance switch to the low setting, we lose a little bit power. We went from that 186 watts, 170 watts, down to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 168 watts at 1% and 146 watts at 0.1%. So it's obviously stepping the voltage down a little bit. You're not killing the power of the amplifier because you're still hitting about the rated power anyways, 150 watt rated power. So with two channels driven, the impedance set in low setting for eight ohm loads is okay, though you get more power when you leave it in the eight ohm setting. And if you have eight ohm speakers, you wouldn't wanna mess with this anyways. You shouldn't even think about messing with it. So I wanna show you what happens in four ohm loads. So I drove the receiver with two channels driven four ohms. I got a whopping 234 watts at 0.1%. And 279.4, 280 watts basically at 1%. That's a lot of power. Now, I overlaid the graphs with the high setting on the impedance and the low setting on the impedance, and it didn't affect it at all, which is surprising because in the past I've seen um, Yamaha receivers, when you set the low setting on the impedance, it cuts the power even at four ohms. And I figured out what's going on here. Basically, the Yamaha receiver puts out about 36 volts RMS into eight ohms before clipping. And when it's driving four ohms, it's only doing about 30.6 watts RMS into four ohms. So when you set the impedance switch to the low setting, it's still, um, the threshold is still at about 34 volts RMS before clipping. 
So you're not getting an ideal voltage source, source behavior here. It's not doubling the power in four ohms. The impedance switch is not showing the limitation of lowering the rail voltages down. You're still getting the same power into four ohms, which is you know very respectful at, respectable at 280 watts at 1% two channels driven. So, so far, it doesn't look like the impedance switch is such a bad thing, right? I've been arguing all these years, don't use the impedance switch, leave it on the high setting all the time. In this case, it doesn't look that bad, but wait, just you wait. Let me show you Hamilton fans. So when you are driving eight ohms, four channels driven, I'm showing you two graphs here superimposed. It's weird how this uh, power graph goes up and then back uh, as you get higher in distortion. That's just the Yamaha limiter circuit. I've never seen a receiver do that other than a Yamaha. But basically, when you have um, four channels driven, without the impedance set to the low setting with the high setting, you're getting about 140 watts with four channels driven. When you go to the low setting, it drops it down to 54 watts at 1% or 43 watts at 0.1%. You just cut your power down to less than a third of what it was by using the low setting. So driving an 8 ohm load, look what this does. It devastates us with multiple channels driven. Right here is the reason why you never want to set this impedance switch to the low setting, regardless of your speaker impedance. It absolutely destroys your ability to drive multiple channels at high power. That's really sad to see that. Not, not surprising, but it's just another thing to say, don't use that setting. So I want to show you what happens with seven channels driven. With seven channels driven, uh, unfortunately, Yamaha puts so many nannies on this receiver. You got the eco mode, you've got the impedance switch, and you got its own protection when you have when you're trying to go on the bench test and trying to do more than four channels driven. It starts limiting power. And as you can see here, with seven channels driven, even in the high setting, we're only at 50 watts. But look what happens with the low setting with with seven channels driven in the low setting. You're getting a whopping 24 watts. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you're spending two grand on a receiver and you're going to go and use this setting on, on the low setting and you're only going to get 24 watts a channel. That's not acceptable. In my opinion, I would never under any circumstance use the impedance in the low setting. So I just wanted to show you a couple more graphs about the eco mode versus the versus the low impedance setting. Um, the, the most power you get, obviously, is with eco mode off. And with the impedance selector set to the high setting, which is what you see here, if you look at the graph, you get the most power all the way to the right in the default setting. That's the setting you should always use. And then you see the graph a little bit to the left of that is with the low impedance setting. And then eco just completely destroys your power. You get down to 58 watts with only two channels driven. Again, do not recommend that. And I want to show you one more. This is with four ohms two channels driven, and I'm comparing um, the default high setting versus the forum setting. As I said before, it didn't make much of a difference, but the eco mode absolutely crushes your power. You went from 230 watts down to 90 watts or 105 watts of 1% distortion. So guys, um, basically there's so many ways that you could put too many nannies on this receiver and completely destroy the dynamics of it. Yamaha put so much protection. The bottom line is even if you leave eco off and you leave the impedance selector switch to set high, there's still nannies in there that won't let you overdrive this receiver. If I run, if I ran full power for, you know, more than five or six minutes for a couple of channels, the fan cut kicked in, you know, I mean, this thing is well regulated. It, it keeps very well cooled. Just use the nannies that are built in and don't go and start using these extra ones like the eco mode or the impedance switch. I don't recommend using those settings. You're just going to handicap your receiver. And what happens when you limit the power of your receiver is now as you turn it up, you're not going to be able to get it louder. It's going to start clipping and that clipping distortion is going to be heard through your speakers and it's not going to sound good. And I don't recommend that. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Again, I want your comments down below about how you're setting up your Yamaha Avantage receiver. Basically, over the years, it's never changed. I've never recommended using the low setting on that, and I never recommend using the Eco on, as I said in the last video. So don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. 
You get direct access to me if you want to ask questions. Hit that subscribe button. Get the bell notification. That way you know when these videos drop next. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.